for God so loved the world. That's not terra firma. That's not the globe on which we walk. Ah, this old world has its beauty and demonstrates the handiwork of the Almighty, our Heavenly Father, but it's going to be burned up. John 3, 16, God so loved you and me. That's it. The world of sinners. And now, the preaching of the gospel with James Watkins. The Word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even through the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, both of joints and marrow, and quick to discern the thoughts and the intents of the heart. From Hebrews chapter 4 at verse 12, the Word of God is living and active. It is always applicable. Friends, it is never out of date. It refutes all error. It corrects my mistakes. It sets forth only the way in which responsible humanity should walk. Dividing asunder soul and spirit, joints and marrow, it misses nothing, touches every area of human life, thought, and experience. Let's talk for the next few moments about uh, an introduction uh, to the Bible. No, no, not uh, profound, uh, not something of uh, the scholars may present, but in a very practical, simple way, so that hopefully it will be beneficial to us in making application of the basic principles upon which our lives should be ordered and governed. Introduction to the Bible. You are aware that the teaching of this book, the Bible, is inspired. Now that word inspired is interesting. It comes from a root suggesting to breathe into inspired. As a matter of fact, the combined word uh, theonustis uh, is most applicable. That is, God breathed. And friend, the message contained in the Bible is indeed God breathed. It could not have originated with man or with any group of men. Just the casual student of God's Word knows that it had to come from an infinite being and all-powerful, all-knowing, everywhere-present God. That's the source of the message contained in this book, the Bible. Inspired of God, breathed of the infinite God. And you know, when you stop to think about just the prophecies of the Bible, it would be evident that it didn't originate with man, and yet we have it, so it had to come from God. There's no question about it. Hundreds of prophecies, more than 300 prophecies concerning Jesus Christ. Hundreds of years before they were fulfilled, and yet they were fulfilled minutely and exactly. You remember when Herod the king inquired of the scribes and Pharisees where the Christ should be born, intending himself to eliminate the so-called king, well, they had no problem at all. They went to Micah chapter 5 at verse 2. Thou Bethlehem, land of Judah, art in no wise least among the princes of Judah, uh, for out of thee shall arise a governor who shall be shepherd of my people. Where was the Christ, uh, the king, uh, born? Oh, in uh, Bethlehem of Judea. Oh, but then there are more than 300 other prophecies concerning the Christ that were fulfilled exactly, completely reliable. Man doesn't know what's going to occur 10 seconds from now. Oh, but God hundreds of times predicted the future, and it came about exactly, oh, and with minute detail, as he said it would be in these prophetic utterances. So just the prophecies of the Bible and their fulfillment would tell you that it is inspired of the infinite God. But you know, when you consider the teaching of the last will and testament of the Son of God, you think with me for a moment, it is unique. It's different from any form of writing or instruction uh, that man has received. You remember that Jesus said, <clears throat> you've heard it said, thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thine enemy. Well, that's, that's typical, isn't it? I mean, especially when we see what's going on in this old world today. Hey, your freedom ends where my nose begins. You, 
Oh, that's, that's worldly uh, reasoning, isn't it? What was it you said, Lord? You've heard it said of them of old time, Thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thine enemy. But I say unto you, love your enemies. Oh, do good to them that despitefully use you. Oh, wait, wait, wait a minute, Lord. What, what are you telling me, friends? The teaching of the last will and testament of the Son of God emphasizes who we really are. We're not simply physical beings in a physical world. We think in terms of retaliation. Oh, yes, uh, numerous times uh, this kind of teaching is done. Uh, the Lord uh, makes that very clear. You've heard it said, an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. Well, that's the way we reasoned, isn't it? That's the way we think. And by the way, the system of jurisprudence under which we live has not changed at all. That's certainly true. When a man is found guilty of uh, violating uh, the law, then, of course, he is punished in proportion to the degree or nature, the seriousness of his crime. And that's law, and we understand that. But uh, what about the Christian's reaction? Oh, he said, uh, whoso smiteth thee on thy right cheek, deck him. Uh, no, no, that, that's, that's the world's logic. Uh, that's the way men reason. No, no, whoso smiteth thee on thy right cheek, turn to him the other also. And if a man would go to law with thee, take away thy coat, let him have thy cloak also. And whosoever would compel thee to go with him one mile, go with him two. Now, what is the Lord actually saying here? What, what is he teaching me? Friends, each person is an immortal soul. How can I influence him for good? Well, not by retaliating in like kind. Uh, that simply won't work. The only power that changes men from the physical to the spiritual is the power of love. Uh, that power of love and full recognition of who we actually are expresses itself with the same spirit that characterized the Son of God. You remember in Philippians 2 verse 5, he said, Have this mind in you, which was also in Christ Jesus who, existing in the form of God, counted not the being on an equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself, taking the form of a servant. Being made in the likeness of men, uh, being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, yea, the death of the cross. What did he say when he hung on that cross? Back lacerated with the whip, spit running down his face, mocked, by those who watched him as he writhed in pain, he said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Well, Lord, I'd have called down those 12 legions of angels. I'd have wiped those. I'd, uh, wait, wait, that's the physical man. That's the way the world reacts. Friends, when you read the Bible, it becomes evident that it is unique, distinct, separate from every other teaching that man has ever received. You know that the content of this book, the Bible, is inspired of God. It is unique. It's a completely uh, different. Uh, but there are 10,000 ways in which we could ascertain the fact that the Bible came from the infinite, all-knowing God. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, <clears throat> the Bible, of course, is not a book on modern uh, material science. Well, certainly not. The Bible is a book on uh, religion, the science of correct living. But you know, when the Bible makes reference to a particular occurrence or fact that science has just recently discovered, it is always amazing that the Bible is completely accurate. As a matter of fact, the mind that directed the writing of the Bible put within it many points or principles of truth that the world knew nothing about. Man simply did not understand. And it is amazing. Herbert Spencer, by the way, was the first to announce there are only five manifestations of the unknowable in existence. Time, force, action, space, and matter. And he said all else is based on these five scientific fundamentals. Now that was hailed as a great announcement indeed in the scientific world. However, Herbert Spencer, the English philosopher, just died in 1903. 
oh, just about a hundred years ago. And, and he made that announcement. Man, that was new. That uh, revolutionized things, didn't it? That was an amazing discovery. However, when you begin to read the Bible, Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, in the beginning time, God force created action, the heaven, space, and the earth matter. Moses, writing by inspiration, put those five scientific fundamentals on the very first verse of the Bible. Oh, but more than that, he put them there in the order in which Herbert Spencer announced them uh, just a little over a hundred years ago. Well, someone says, what does that prove? Nothing, nothing. Uh, but isn't it amazing for its accuracy? You see, the mind that directed the writing of the Bible, infinite, infinite. And when it speaks of things that at the time of writing had never really been thought of, I mean, never considered at all, uh, when men finally arrive at an understanding of a certain principle, hey, if the Bible mentions it, it is exactly accurate. There's no variation from uh, truth. That is amazing. You know, all men once agreed with Sir Isaac Newton that light is an emanation from the sun and other luminous heavenly bodies. Oh, but more recently, scientists have discovered that light can exist apart from the sun. Oh, now, since that has been discovered, there are many people who make light of the old Bible idea that, that light comes from the sun. <laughs> That's not an old Bible idea. As a matter of fact, let's go back to Genesis chapter 1, begin at verse 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was waste and void. Darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved, the King James says, brooded, upon the face of the waters. And God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw the light, that it was good. And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. Oh, but you'll have to drop down to Genesis chapter 1, verses 14 through 19 and observe the exercise of God's creative powers on the fourth day before you find him making the sun, moon, and stars, the greater light to rule the day, the lesser light to rule the night. Oh, and there was evening and there was morning, the fourth day. What does the Bible say about light? Oh, since 1,500 years before Christ came on the scene, the Bible said that light existed before the sun.